Good evening. Welcome to another episode of Classic Books with Rashad Mitchell. This is the Bible study time. Like the Spirit study Bible, let's get to 1 Samuel chapter 1. Here we go. Verse 5, and it reads, But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. The Lord had closed her womb. That means Hannah's barrenness is ascribed directly to the activity of God. He had withheld children to prepare her for the birth of her son, Samuel, who would become a great prophet and experience of barrenness, frustration, shame, waiting was a trial for her faith. Desperate intercession it produced and her prepared and her prepared the way for her miracle to come forth for God's prophetic plan to be birthed. In the same way, at times God may cause us to experience disappointment, spiritual barrenness, and brokenness so that we cry out in desperate desperation to God for his holy intervention. We should do, do as Hannah did, take our unbearable situation and pain directly to the Lord and wait for him. In verse eleven, let's get into that. It says uh and she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon her your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. I will give him to the Lord. I mean, Hannah showed her gratitude, love, and devotion to the Lord by her willingness to dedicate her son to the Lord's work. In the same way, Christian parents today may express their commitment to God and his kingdom by giving their sons and daughters to the ministry or to the work of missions in other lands. So these, these those parents who support and encourage and pray for their children will find great favor with God. No raise of head that means uncut hair was a sign of the Nazarite vow. In verse number 20, verse 20, it reads, So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel saying, because I asked the Lord for him. So Samuel, give birth to his son Samuel. That means that although this book deals largely with the transition in Israel's history from the period of the judges to the establishment of the kingship, the first eight chapters concentrate on the birth, early life, prophetic leadership of Samuel, the last judge, this prophet of God, to see the institution of the king in Israel who stood under the word and spirit of God as represented by Samuel. So throughout the Bible, the prophet as God's representative to Israel took precedence over the kingship and all other offices. And finally, in verse number 28, and it reads, So now give him to the Lord, for his whole life he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshiped the Lord there. Given over to the Lord. I mean, Hannah is an excellent example of a praying godly mother. From the time she first desired to have a child, she prayerfully and purposely represented, presented her son before the Lord to regard her as a Gracious gift from God, expressing her intention to fulfill her vow to by dedicating him to the Lord. All right, so that's it, man. I'll be in chapter two tomorrow in the uh, Life Spirit Study Bible. I'll be in there tomorrow. So, uh, second chapter is first Samuel. Until then, talk to you tomorrow.